this is Ionic, and thanks for checking out my first ever After Effects tutorial. Before I get started, I want to give some quick recognition to Angelic7 for his really awesome angel wing sketch off DeviantArt.com. Since I'm not very good at concept drawings myself, I was just looking online for something that had an interesting shape, and his was definitely one of the coolest. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering a method for creating 3D angel wings in Adobe After Effects uh, using the Trapcode 3D Stroke plugin. I'm also going to uh, use some other third-party plugins just for stylizing, but they're really unnecessary for the core of this tutorial. I'll also just touch on some more advanced techniques that'll allow you to do more advanced animations like uh, folding, and also a little bit of a compositing trick that will allow you to actually bend the wings around your actor without having them get cut off by your composite. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to start off in a brand new composition. Uh, I'm working in uh, HD 720 right now, but you can use whatever you're going to be uh, editing your project in. And uh, the first thing you may notice is I have my title and action safe visible so that I can see the center line of the composition, because that will be um, very important when we're creating the wing first off. So I'm going to go ahead and drag in my concept R here. And I'm going to scale that horizontally, just flip it to the other side, and I'm going to drag it uh, just off the center line here. Maybe scale it up just a little bit to make better use of a real estate. And the reason it's important to have it just off the center line is, um, first off, you, you want room to duplicate the wing later on, and you want to be able to create a rig that uh, you can have just coming right out of your actor's back. So we just want to position it about where it's going to end up. And we definitely don't want it overlapping that center line. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new solid. Let's make sure that's comp size. And I'll drop the opacity down to 5% or so so that I can see through to my concept art. From this point on, we're basically going to create a skeleton of masks for each feather. And we do that just by tracing the feathers, radiating out from the meaty part of the wing here, where it attaches to your actor's back, and extending outwards to the tip of each feather. There are a couple tips at this stage that will uh, really help. In that, um, First off, um, here in the, the meaty part of the wing, you can have the, the masks overlap quite a bit. And I lock the masks as I go, just so I don't have problems selecting them. And then second, um, I tend to actually work outwards. Um, I, I start on the inside, upper part of the wing, and I radiate outwards towards the tip of the wing, and then back down. And then once I'm done with that, I'll actually go in and I'll create a second set of masks that just come straight out from the meaty part of the wing here, and fill in the gaps and, and add these interior feathers, and the bulk of the wing. It's also very important at this stage to uh, color code your masks, because if you're going to do any of the, um, the more advanced animations, like um, getting folding, uh, I turn the bend off here and then I fold it, um, you'll see that I'm actually doing it by setting keyframes on the masks themselves. And in order to do that, you have to be able to select the masks and animate them individually, and it's really difficult without having them color coded. In this composition, uh, you can see I have everything color-coded. I've got um, yellow and red uh, masks to start off with, and then uh, purple and black for the, the interior feathers, just so that I, I could select them in groups and manipulate them. It's a lot easier to lock down masks and then just uh, animate them one at a time than um, using other methods. Another important thing, if you're going to change your wing shape by uh, editing the masks, is to remember that um, the mask shapes will always animate strictly from A to B. So what I mean from that is, if we create one feather here that we're going to intend to animate downwards into a folded position, if I set a keyframe and then move ahead a little bit and I just move these paths down to where I might expect them to be folded, That may look okay, but if I scroll back in the time slider, we can see that the mask points are just going from one spot to the other, and that's really no good. So I'm going to delete that keyframe, and I'll change the mask so we can see it a little bit better. What I do is I tend to um, animate in steps. So I will um, grab just the, the top um, vertexes here, and then I will hit Control T so I can transform it, and I'll drag that center point that I can rotate around uh, up here to where I'd expect the, the wing to be rotating around a fold. And I will rotate it 
about halfway. And then I'll, I'll drag forward again and repeat that. I'll hit Control T, I move that center point, and then finish rotating it down into a folded position. That way, when um, I'm animating that rotation, it has a much nicer circular motion. And it, I don't get that straight linear line that just wouldn't look very good at all. So I'm going to save some time here and go straight to my uh, rig skeleton. Uh, here I've got all the masks already set up. Uh, you don't have to have the mass animated at this point. That's just totally optional. I'll go ahead and hide my concept art and bring the opacity on this way back up. And from here we can actually add the strokes. We can uh, go to Effect, Trap Code, and add our 3D Stroke plugin. I'll go ahead and hide those masks. We can already see that the wing is starting to take a, a little bit of shape. And if we go into the, the taper settings of 3D Stroke and turn that on, immediately we get a very nice result. The only problem is here towards where the, the wing should be joining up with the actor's back, as that's tapering as well. So we want to take our taper start here and turn that all the way down to zero, and that fixes that. And it stays nice and thick there and then gets thinner as it goes out to the tip of each feather. The next thing we want to do is we want to make the plugin aware of the um, After Effects 3D space. And to do that, we just twirl down the camera settings and we turn on the comp camera. And by doing that, it allows us so that when we create a um, composition camera, and I'll create a, uh, a null object, control L, we'll name that camera controller. Make sure that's a 3D null object, and I'll parent the camera to it. Uh, with the comp camera setting turned on, now when we rotate our camera around the wing, it actually uh, is aware of the After Effects camera, and that's very important for when we construct the second wing. So with that done, um, another optional thing that we can do is we can kind of fill in the, the bulk of the wing by using a repeater. And I just tend to, I turn it on, and I turn the, the doubler off, and I turn the instances just down to one. And I'll just scale down the, the wing to, um, say, 85% or so. And then I'll drop the opacity. And what that does is it just kind of fills in some of the gaps and gives a little more depth. If I rotate the camera a little bit, I can even offset the um, the wing in, in Z space just a little bit, maybe uh, five or so. And I, I don't want it um, the repetition to split away from the wing. I just want to give a little bit of depth um, and fill in some of the gaps. At this point, if uh, we go into the, the wing settings and we twirl down our transform settings, if we add an, a bend, we can already see that uh, the wing is bending very nicely. And we didn't have to do anything else but just um, add the strokes to our mass paths. And I can see by rotating the camera around that it's bending uh, away from us. So I'm going to turn it around um, so it's bending towards us, which is what we want. If we change this bend axis property, we can already see it has kind of an interesting flapping animation. And again, it was super easy. We didn't have to do anything to get to this point, but I just turned that up. Now that that's done, um, I basically want to start off by creating um, a rig that we could bind this to. Um, it'd be really helpful if we had this all bound to a null object so that you could just bind it to your actor and maybe motion track it and that will really help later on. So I'm going to create a new null object and I'll change that so it's a different color. And for this one I kind of like to um, have the box in the center point so I'm going to uh, change that to 50-50 so that the anchor point is right in the center of my little box. makes it really easy to select. And I'm going to make sure that that is a, um, a 3D null object. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm basically going to add expressions to all of these properties so that I can bind them to the null object. So I'm going to alt click um, the um, start, the end shape, uh, the bend and the bend axis, and then all of the um, tra uh, position and rotation um, values. So the x, y, the z, and then all the rotations. And that will allow me to control all that from the, the null object. Um, the start and the end I also um, keyframed because we can get some really interesting effects with that. If I um, turn it off real quick I can show you what it does. Um, say if you wanted a animation where um, it was appearing off your actor's back in an interesting way, you can actually change these and get um, some interesting changes in your wings just by changing the one slider. So I'll turn those back on. 
basically um, what I want to do is I want to um, twirl down my um, position information by uh, hitting P and then holding shift I'll hit R and then that gives me everything that I, I need right there and then I'll go down here and uh, see that my um, expressions are visible and I'm gonna select these starting with XY position and I'm gonna use the the pick whip button and I'm going to pull it up here and select the position and then I'll do the same with the Z position except now I'll just go up here and select the Z value and then I'll do the same with the X rotation the Y and the Z so now that we're done animating just that if I uh, bring this down here we can already see that now when we rotate that uh, null object everything moves as it should and it tracks along with the null perfectly and that's really good so now to control the other values I'm going to add some expression controls so I'm going to start off with uh, a slider control and I'm going to duplicate that twice with control D and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to add a angle control so down here uh, we want the angle control to um, uh, basically control our, um, our flapping motion, our, our bend cycles. So I'll make sure that I can see that there. And then I'm going to pick whip that to our angle control and name that bend cycles. And then this one will be our bend value. So I'll select our bend value and bring that up there and pick whip it there. And if we um, change this value, you can see that it's it's doing a little too much. So we want to tone that down a little bit. If we expand that and right click and edit value, we can change the maximum value to 5. That way we can animate the slider and it's much less drastic. We can uh, have a little finer control over it. Then finally, I want to bind our, um, our start and ending position. So I will name this our... Um, actually... Um, made a mistake a little earlier. I don't want to control the, the start value because um, really that particular value doesn't seem to be that helpful. It will be a little later on when we're doing a, another technique, but I want to animate the offset instead, so I'll click that. And then I will rename that my end value and this my offset value. And then I'll go back down here and I will pick with those And that should do it. The offset, or the end, I wanted 100 so we could see our wing again. And those are our default values that now we can change on the fly.